So this is the assembled clutch shoe or clutch and flywheel assembly. So you can install all four shoes and springs separate from the crank and you don't need to build it, you know, put the flywheel on first. So you can't assemble it off the engine. So you want to make sure all the screws are flush. Make sure all these clutch surfaces and the friction surfaces don't have any oil on them. You want to make sure your, your hands are clean. Um, and that they're all going in the correct direction. Next thing you want to make sure is that the inside of the flywheel, uh, where the collet seats, is clean. Um, I use a Q-tip. Throw some uh, rubbing alcohol or brake cleaner, acetone. Get in there, clean it off. Same thing applies for the collet. You don't want to have any grease or oil on it. So if, you, if you're reusing a collet from another engine, you want to make sure you wipe off all the oil and fuel that will be on it, you know, from dribbling out of the front bearing. And so you want to make sure that's clean. Same thing with the clutch nut or the flywheel nut. Um, there's a lot of oil on them. I've already cleaned this one out. Uh, see if we can see if there's some more oil on it. Again, just use a Q-tip. So I, got, I cleaned it before, but you can see there was still some stuff on there, some uh, machine oil and um, stuff on there that would prevent the thread locker from, from working. So previous section, I wiped off the threads on the engine crankshaft. So I'm going to show you how the assembly is going to go. So first, you're going to push the collet all the way, on, all the way onto the engine. Then you'll take this flywheel, push it all the way on there. The nut is going to, is what holds the entire assembly on there. But you need to have something to hold the flywheel while you're cr cranking down on the, uh, on the nut. So this is the serpent tool, but any eight millimeter wrench is going to do fine. Um, if using, or sorry, eight millimeter socket. Um, it does need to be kind of narrow because uh, this is a pretty tight fit in here. So if you have a large socket, it might not work. Large socket and uh, so let's see here. I have a so this is I believe like a just a Kyosho or a Thunder Tiger. So this one you wouldn't be able to tighten it because it's too big. So you want to make sure you have a good, you know, relatively small diameter. This uh, I think this may be an associated one. Again, this one also wouldn't work because the inside diameter of the flywheel is smaller than the outside diameter of the tool. So I'm using this Serpent one. I believe there's an OS tool for their uh, glow plugs. I believe it's the same size. So first thing I'm going to do is show you is I'm going to put just a drop, just a very, very small drop of Loctite where the collet's going to sit. This is just to kind of help it stay seated. Um, it's going to get, as it gets tightened on there, it's going to get, um, this little gap is going to tighten down there. And the whole point is just to be on there by friction. So I have the collet on there first, and then I'm going to put the flywheel on. Depending on which clutch system you have, they might have shims that go here under the crank to properly space the flywheel off and on the crankshaft. So here's a collet. You see it's in the fly and gets stuck in the flywheel. Call it flywheel and springs clutch assembly installed. Next thing uh, actually is I'm going to put again another drop of first I put a drop here on the crankshaft which went around the collet. This is going to be to hold the nut so that the vibration of the engines does not shake it apart or cause it to come loose. And then the nut. So what's going to happen is you tighten it down. The nut's going to tighten up, but it's going to want to rotate the engine. And you don't want it to rotate the engine. You want it to um, the flywheel to be stationary and the nut to be stationary. So I have a 19 millimeter wrench. You can use an adjustable wrench. And I'm grabbing just on these flats right here. I'm not grabbing on the clutch shoe material just on these this upper part and cranking it down you 
you want to crank down real tight so that it uh, it stays on there and that it doesn't come undone. So the next relatively big step is you want to install two shims before you put the bearing on. And this is going to keep the clutch belt away from the flywheel. So if you don't put those on there, what could happen is that the flywheel will sit down too far low and be rubbing on the on the flywheel. So uh, the shims, you've got just a few shims on here, not too many. So the it says to use the two thinnest shims. So it's the five by eight by point one. So there's two of them. They're very, very thin. So the thickest one will be the 0.5. The next thick one will be the 0.3. And the two ones that are like paper thin are the 0.1. So these are those two shims. We'll install them here on the crankshaft on the just a, uh, outside of the nut. Same thing with the clutch bell bearings. Uh, I've wiped them off. If this oil, if there's oil in them, which a lot of times there's a little bit of oil in them, what happens? It'll fling out when it's uh, as it's spinning in there, and then get on your friction surfaces. So you want to make sure those are clean, not pouring out with oil. And so I have it on there. You can see that it's the it's not rubbing on the flywheel, the clutch bell, and it looks like yep, real nice, real smooth. Now the shims on the outside are also going to be optional. You might or might not need them. Just looking at this one, it's very close to it. I shouldn't need any shims. I should be able to just install this nut or the crankshaft screw. Now I didn't put any Loctite on yet because I'm going to check the adjustment first. So run it down all the way on, tighten it and see what, see how much axial play I have. So it's actually pretty tight. It's probably on the lower end of the amount of free play that you want. Because as the clutch bell heats up and the bearings heats up, it wants to expand. And if it's there's no play in it, it will uh, damage the bearings. The bearings will come out of their cages and um, it'll just get real sloppy. So it's got good play on it. Rotates freely. Uh, it does move just a little bit. That's the probably the minimum, least amount of free play I'd want. I'd generally want a little bit more. So I'm not going to use any of those shims. Next up, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to clean off this screw real quick. Let's make sure it's clean before I put any Loctite on it. Because this one, uh, if this screw gets loose, it will your clutch assembly will fall off, or your sorry, your clutch bell will fall off. So just cleaning up parts wash. As you can see, there was some. Um, machine oil on there got my washer on there I'm gonna put again just a very very small dab these are removable parts and you want to be able to adjust them and shim them as necessary so you don't want to gob it up with Loctite you also don't want to get the Loctite inside the bearing either so and this you just crank down on it hold the flywheel and that's how it's assembled uh, next videos i'm going to set this up in my srx8 pro evo buggy and show you what to check for